friends if i said to you that just by looking at your face or taking a look at your photograph i'll be able to predict your political affiliation with a great degree of accuracy i think you'll be surprised and you would think that this is some sort of science fiction script that i'm telling you but it is not in 2020 in the very famous uh, and reputed journal called nature there is a paper so that is 3 years ago and it talks about a very efficient model which exactly does that you must have experienced this sometime that you express the urge to have thai curry at home and by the end of the day you have received lot of emails and messages on facebook about thai coupons thai food coupons which you can utilize in your neighborhood these two things have something in common and that is artificial intelligence and industry 4.0 so this industrial revolution that is engulfing us it is very special because this is the first time in history of mankind that the technological evolution has surpassed biological evolution if you think that artificial intelligence is somewhere out there and it is not really impacting your life then we are gra gravely mistaken let me give you an example you wake up in the morning and you are brushing your teeth and the bristles in your brush have already noted issues in your teeth and they have already been communicated to your dentist using your own wifi without your knowledge and before you have a cup of tea the dentist calls and says a visit is in order this is power of artificial intelligence another thing is social media which we are used to and we keep hearing if you don't pay for the product you are the product social media case in point now social media likes if you look at 68 of them that is enough for me to predict how you will behave as a human being up to 95% accuracy think of that if i have 300 likes that you have given on facebook or some social media platform i will be able to predict much more than your partner that is the power of ai and it's not limited only to these areas it is not only at the doorstep but it has already entered our house and many other fields for example medicine is one of them we keep hearing about robotic surgery we keep hearing about smart farming we keep hearing about how water and pesticide should be given to the the sections of the farms and because we are having this event in ils law college which is a very reputed institution let me give an example of law legal space you have supace s u p a c e and this is a portal that the honorable supreme court of india has put up that uses artificial intelligence now you might think this is all technical and this has nothing to do with the creative side of human life not so i'll give you many examples but suffice to say that sculpting music dance rap music script writing all of these fields have been already uh touched by artificial intelligence three examples i want to give you just to underscore my point one a painting of edmond de bellamy which was auctioned at the christies for 10000 dollars as the starting bid eventually closed within 6 to 7 minutes and it was sold for 4 lakh 32500 dollars just under a half half a million mark and mind you this was not done by a human being this was done by a computer this is 2018 5 years ago if you look at 2019 game of thrones right episode 1 of season 8 was written not by a human being but it was written by a computer so this is 2019 and just 3 days ago you might have read that uh, the top photography competition of the world and one photograph was selected as number 1 and the artist german artist very graciously refused to accept the the award and he declared that the paint the photograph was not done by him it was not due to him it was done by a computer so this is what is really happening with artificial intelligence all walks of life have been impacted and will be impacted more and more now by now you must have guessed 
that if industry 1, 2, 3 took 100 years, but 4th has taken only 40, then industry 5 should be round the corner. And you are absolutely right. In just 10 years, 2021, we already have the advent of industry 5.0. So industry 5.0 naturally builds on industry 4. And it has two other emergent branches. One is biolization or bioeconomy, which we will not talk about today. But the other one is very important for us for personal growth and that is cobot technology. Cobot is nothing but robots working with humans and the robots or AI or machines doing the repetitive and transactional parts and we have humans doing the creative parts. When they work in tandem and without conflict, it's called cobot technology. So that is industry 5.0. What we also need to remember is the surrounding ecosystem is changing very fast. For example, the half-life of knowledge has come down to less than five years, which means in simple words, if I learn something today, in five years time, it is going to be only half as effective. This also means in about 15 years, it's going to be rendered useless. Think about what we are learning today. If you think about the changes those are happening around us, they would require the education system also to change for us and for the institutions. And the education is indeed changing from 3R to 3I. R would be reading, writing, arithmetic. And now it's changing to 3Is, interdisciplinary, integrated, and individualized. In fact, World Economic Forum does say that 54% of the people currently in the field are going to require reskilling. Two thirds of the job are going to just evaporate. We are not going to have those jobs available. Right? So we will need the three eyes as part of our, our life. And that is nothing but learning how to learn, rather meta learning. And so this theme is going to be very, very central for us. The learning strategies and self-learning is number two important skill as far as World Economic Forum goes. And all these predictions are for 2025 done in 2018. Remember, this is pre-COVID. So with automation and after COVID, things are only hastening. Right? So there are two aspects that we need to keep in mind as far as the learning strategy, self-learning is concerned. One is you need to have self-discovery. And the second, you need to have individualized interventions. So these two pillars, and again, both of them are going to be aided by AI. So really the theme is that AI is causing disruptions, but AI is also providing solutions. And let's em embrace those. In case of self-discovery, there are multitude of solutions in psychology, fortunately. And they are, they are what I call point solutions, which means they will be able to give you a wonderful slice of your personality but it will not throw light completely on the comprehensive uh, being that you are. And so we will need multitude of such. And that I call edge solution. Instead of point solution, you must have set of points which would create an edge. And it is just coincidental that today the theme of the TEDx is edge. So I find it really interesting. The psychological aspects need to be augmented with capacity, with anxiety measurements, with creativity, the type of learning, and so on, and memory. So these type of things need to be measured. And one knows what you don't measure, you can't control. So we will have to have an integrated solution for that. And the point I want to just drive home by giving a simple example. If I go to a doctor, and if I talk to the doctor, giving the MRI report of my stomach, and if I ask the doctor to give me diagnosis and prognosis, a good doctor will tell me that while the MRI is good, I need at least basic uh, family information. I need at least rudimentary blood report and so on. So this comprehensive view of personality is needed. And in fact, that is what we have done in our research group. We have looked at 21 parameters of uh, psychology and we also have have been able to create a comprehensive view of uh, personality. And they say, if you want to teach physics to a student, then you need to know not only physics, but also the student. So this part is very, very important. The second aspect 
is where we are going for individualized uh, learning and the individual interventions are also necessary. So, depending on the constitution of a learner, if I am able to give specific interventions, then they, they are going to create much better outcomes and this is something that AI uh, does and we have in fact built a very unique model in our research group where we have looked at 21 parameters of personality and looked at 26 study methods and we have mapped them using AI and this is very unique and we are able to see marked improvement in learning, in understanding and thereby in performance and marks, right. Again a very simple idea, all the people sitting here, those who are right handed, if I ask them to write their names but with their left hand, it, the chances are that your handwriting may not be as good, chances are that you will take longer time to write and it is not because you cannot write, it is simply that you cannot write with your left. So the personalization, individualization is going to be very key. Now to that end, we feel that there are three dimensions along which we need to progress. The first dimension is where you are going from transactional to transformational. The other dimension is where you are moving from IQ to EQ and the third dimension is where you are looking at manual or blue collar work to cognitive or white collar work. And the farther you move away from the origin, the better you are and safer you are from the advent of technology. That is the idea behind this model. And so if you find yourself in red category, that means you are closer to transactional, manual and rote memory learning, then you need to really speed up. If you are in the yellow, you are kind of safe. But if you are in green, then that is where you want to go and where you want to aspire to be, okay. Um, these methods uh, that we are going to suggest as interventions have proven extremely useful for both students as well as professionals. Now even educational system will need to change and there, there are two players, one is the teachers, the other is students. In case of teachers, they will need to be much more than Google, in the sense they will need to add anecdotes, they will need to give experiences, they will need to be facilitators or mentors. And the students on the other hand should not depend entirely on GPT, right. GPT may give answers but you will still have to apply your mind. And so the model I am suggesting is where the teachers are Google plus plus but the students are chat GPT minus minus. And if we work with this model, we have a much better story where AI will help us. A car, very expensive one has broken down and the owner of the car has tried to mend it to no avail. There comes a very humble mechanic and takes a very small hammer and taps on the machine, on the engine and the car starts. The owner is dismayed and he is very surprised and asks the mechanic for the bill. And the bill given is something that surprises him even more because the mechanic sends him a bill of 10,000 rupees. And the car owner says, why 10,000? What is the breakup of this 10,000? And the mechanic says, rupee 1 for taking the hammer and striking at the engine. Rupee is 9,999 to know where to strike. I feel artificial intelligence is a tool and we should use it such that it does the heavy lifting and it leaves us for more creative work. So it is important for us to use AI to free us up for doing creative, uh, bring out creative abilities that we possess. Thank you.